swear the Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, in righteousness, and in nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. If you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, if you will return to me, and if you will put away your abominable false gods out of my sight, and not stray away, them. and if you swear as the Lord lives in truth, in judgment, justice, and in righteousness, I promise every area and relation, then the nations will bless themselves in him, in him with their glory. For thus says the Lord to the man of Judah, to Jesus, break up your ground. Left and cut it for a season, so that you may not so among the foes. Sacrifice yourselves to the Lord and take away the force because of your hearts. You men of Judah and Abel of Israel, lest my wrath go forth like fire, consuming all the gates in its way, and burn so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Father, bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I want to take a subject. Called rest. God wants to bless you. God wants to what? To bless you. But you panic a lot. And you stress a lot. And that becomes a roadblock to your perception of how the supernatural operates. In the realm of the glory of God, in the realm of His presence, there is no stress and there is no panic. Verse 2. If you swear as the Lord lives in truth, in judgment and justice, and in righteousness, uprightness in every area and relation, then the nations will bless themselves in Him and in Him with their glory. Father, bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verse 3. There has to be balance in your life, in the spiritual realm, to move forward. They don't understand that the Lord wants the nations to turn to Him, but for Him to move in any region, state, or territory, there has to be people that are willing to allow Him to operate through them by His Spirit. God he wants to govern, He wants to manage. I've had preachers preach and say, well, what is good to live here on earth? Things are going crazy. The economy is terrible. I mean, we're in Port St. Lucie right here, where the terrorists that want to kill people in Orlando came from this, within this area, and was working at a beach here and living around this area. And nobody knew about it. So the Lord is not really limited how much He can do. It's just who is He going to do it through? You can be here because the Lord wants to show you how to believe Him for the impossible. If you're going to operate in the impossible realm, you have to rest. It's what I mean rest. Stop panicking and stress and, and just to rest like a child. Childlike faith. Simplicity. Believe just like a child. The childlike faith simply believe and don't try to figure things out. How am I going to come out of debt? How am I going to come out of this situation? How is my marriage going to get better? How am I going to graduate? How am I going to pass this exam or this test? Those things that arise within our thinking and begin to educate us in a negative way about God become hindrances and limitations. So, to direct your focus 
to the Lord is going to begin through fellowship. Verse 5. Declare in Judah. I'm going to read from the, I'm going to read from the King James. Please tell me verse 5. To my chapter from verse 5. Declare in Judah and publish in Jerusalem. Say, blow ye the trumpet in the land. Cry and gather together and say, assemble yourselves and let us go into the defense cities. Set up the standard towards Zion. Retire, stand out. I will bring evil from north and great destruction. What is If the nation does not return to the Lord now, it will be destroyed. Who is going to provoke the nation to return to the Lord? You. And how are you going to do it? By letting his light manifest through you. Can I hear that? You know, and and, and I, don't, I didn't come to sound do, but I came to sound the glory. The glory comes to set a distinction between you and the world. If the world is afraid of terrorists, we're not going to be afraid of terrorists. If the world is afraid of poverty, we're not going to be afraid of poverty. If the world is afraid of epidemics and, uh, you know, unusual sicknesses like the Zika virus, it's not going to come on you. Because we have a glory. Can I even know that? It's time for the church to believe God for supernatural protection, for divine protection. People are living in fear. We're here in this great assembly. And we understand very well that people are living in panic. They don't know what's going to happen. America is faced with a lot of stress levels. Stress in the political arena. Stress in the Hollywood. Many celebrities are dying suddenly from drug overdose. You think about prisoners, millions of dollars. And he died in an elevator. For the drug overdose. Why was he stressed? Because there's no peace in the world. There is no peace among the wicked. There is no peace where the wicked live. But the righteous is bold as a lion, and the wicked flee when no one pursues them. If you are the righteous of God, you have to be at peace at all times. Can I hear me to that? So if you have problems in your life, those are stepping stones. If the challenge you're facing in your life is temporary, it cannot defeat the one that is in you. Can I hear me to that? says in the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 8 the righteous is delivered out of trouble and the wicked cometh in his stead practically the law of substitution works like this what the enemy meant for evil God turns around to work for your good the righteous is delivered out of trouble and the wicked what, let me read one more time for you it says here in verse 8 the righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. Why would God take the wicked and bless them in the trouble that had come for you? That's how you're going to be a witness to them. Your deliverance is a witness to them. Your miracle is a witness to them. Your freedom is a witness to them. That they should turn to Jesus so they can be free also. Amen. So if they're going to come out of bondage, they have to see somebody who was in bondage that came out your testimony is what is going to preach to the world I'm here to announce that God's going to do a miracle for you just because you walk through those doors hallelujah oh glory to God listen to me I'm going to share a testimony here that's going to help you really push the button of belief you're going to just press it and then believe God for your miracle Are you ready? Listen to this. I was preaching in many of us. A woman was crippled. Totally crippled. I know her husband had to do everything for her. Wash her. Feed her. Do everything. Carry her back and forth. The brother of the meeting. I prayed for her. She took the word and believed it. She didn't walk right in front of her eyes. No. The wilder in, wilder back home. But because the word had been spoken under the glory and under the anointing, she believed. Is the room to call? You 
sounds like it. Thank you. So she believed. When she went back home, she began to act on the word that was spoken over her life. Her husband continued to do the regular duties. He would take her, wash her, feed her, do everything that she could not do. Now listen to this. One time he was sleeping and he had somebody in the kitchen singing songs, washing dishes. And he was wondering, who is that? He can't see his wife. Go to the kitchen, he found his wife moving freely, doing everything. This is what she said. She woke up one morning and the gratefulness had totally left her and she went straight, sing for the Lord, doing all the duties she desired to do because now the infirmity had come. Let's give her the clap offering for the powerful testimony. So how did she see the manifestation of a miracle? She saw it through the process of exercising her faith in what was spoken of her that she believed it and then the Lord caused it to manifest on Easter resurrection some people heal instantly we have people jumping out of wheelchairs running it happens instantly sometimes it happens gradually there is nothing too difficult for God the reason why the woman received a miracle on the resurrection day is because she rested. She did not stress. She did not let her circumstance define her relationship. She maintained the focus and maintained her relationship even when the situation was uncomfortable. And then the glory of God was able to strike hard and nullify the infirmity. And she began to move freely and nothing could stop her. That's the God I'm talking about that has prayer supernaturally. Listen to this. The lips, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 31 and 32. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the forward turn shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. The distinction between the believer and the non-believer is we know what the word of God says and we profess it. God's angels are activated when we speak the word of God. That's when they are released. Not when we speak the negativity of what we are dealing with. Stop talking about the negative circumstances in your life. Stop talking about your problems. Begin talk about solution. Stop talking about the wickedness the enemy is doing against you. Talk about the greatness of what God is doing in your life. Amen. Our tongue is to, to profess our mouth and lips and to release the spoken word, the realm of word. The lips of the Russians know what is acceptable. But the mouth of the wicked speak of forwardness. You are righteous. If you're a believer, you know what is acceptable. If you're not a believer, you don't know. So you're going to speak, I'm broke. That's not God's word. You're not broke. Let the poor say, I am rich. So you're supposed to say, I am rich. I'm not broke. Say, Amen. Speak what the word of God says about your circumstance, not what the doctor says. So stop saying, I'm a diabetic. Say, I am healed by the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So you say, well, are we living in denial or we are living in faith? Oh yeah, we're living in what? In faith. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. So the glory of God operates in the advance. You know what I call cash advance? Let's say you travel somewhere, and then you take your credit card, and you do cash advance, they give you whatever you want, and then you walk out. It's an advance from your credit card. Boom, you, you go spend it. You see, you did some adamance. The glory of God, He activates the advance where you don't have to pay interest because Christ wiped all the interest out. 
when we're in the glory of God, we begin to see what they now cannot see. So I could be in India and get some cash items from my credit card and then spend it. I don't have to come to my bank in the United States to get money out. Some say, man. So I'm in a foreign land and I'm going to go and spend that money there. Because I have a need. So when we're in the glory of God, we get the advance. We harvest in the advance. Oh, hallelujah. You didn't hear what I said. You took quiet. Why come and make some noise for the Lord? I said, you can make some noise for Jesus. Which means a child could be in could be in a third grade and they have a brain of a sixth grade. Can I hear me to that? Your child could be in eighth grade and have a brain of somebody two grades about them. Someone say, man. They could be in middle school and have a mind of a college kid. Someone say, hallelujah. It's called the glory harvest because when you're in the glory, you operate in the place of no limit. So, the level of your humility is what causes the manifestation. Someone say, hallelujah. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. Someone say, amen. You could be exactly 13 years and you can run a bank. You say, oh, God's wisdom can come upon you to operate. That's what happened to David. It happened to Jesus. Jesus was a kid and he was able to challenge the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the temple. The wisdom and his intelligence was so deep that they couldn't figure out. And even his parents forgot him. I don't want to live in limits. I want to put God in limits. I want to live in the realm of the glory of God because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So rest. You can't be in the glory unless you rest. You stress too much. They were angry. People don't like it. They don't even know what they want. They go to expensive restaurants and order food. They say, I don't like this. Change it. You just want to taste it. Are you aware that people are so angry with them? You have to be joyful.
So you can't operate in God's favor if you don't rest. So most people are stressed. They're beat down by their thoughts. Their mind is so mesmerized that it makes them look older than their real age. A believer should never be depressed. Why? Because they're in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. If you're in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So if I'm in the Spirit and I'm fellowship with the Holy Spirit, where does depression come from? Evidence that you're not fellowship with the Holy Spirit in prison. Evidence that the joy of the Lord has been left in your closet is discouragement. When you discourage, that means you left the joy of the Lord in your closet. Go pick it up. Get on your knees and you just go quiet. So what I'm here. I just want to be around you. Do you have anything to say? <laughs> yes, he knows what you want before you ask. How dare the Lord tell his disciples, go and tie that cold? If someone, if, if they ask you why you take it, tell them the master has been for me. He's been using and tied. He was waiting for the Lord. Their blessing. Said really or oh, yes. That's why don't God says never worry about tomorrow because when you get there, tomorrow's been taken care of. Who oh, is in my future? Jesus. So why do I worry about tomorrow? No. I'm okay. Someone say, man, everything is gonna be what? Alright. My tomorrow is taken care of. Someone say hallelujah. Glory to God. The devil is a liar. Every spiritual roadblock to your breakthrough will listen when you stand on God's word. Because the Bible says, the lips of the rushes, it said, the rushes know what to say. We say things that are going to become alive. In the Bible says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Stop decreeing doom over your life. Stop decreeing failure over your life. Stop decreeing poverty over your life. God's angels are about to respond. The ministers of finance are about to show up. God's angels are about to deliver packages to you of restoration, of joy, of peace. Hallelujah. The Bible never says, put on a cover of sorrow. It says, put on a cover of praise. Can I hear someone say, hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to practice to do some cartwheels. Some of you, all you eat is chicken, breakfast, lunch, dinner, chicken, chicken. Eat some broccoli so you can get a shrimp and do some cartwheels for the Holy Ghost. Once your mortgage is wiped off and paid, you can do 20 cartwheels for the Holy Ghost. Somebody say hallelujah. Can I hear me do that? David danced until his garments fell off. You know, his wife got jealous because this man was dancing too much. And she complained, why are you dancing like that? You're a king. God was not happy. You know, God wants you just to be like a child. Go home, turn it up, and just dance for the Lord. Come and somebody say, hallelujah. You can also laugh it off, hallelujah. You can just take your business, you can laugh. Ha, 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 ha. My daddy took care of you, somebody say, hallelujah. Glory to God. Someone say amen. You can take your dog and just go walk around and say, I'm free. I'm free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go to the park and walk. Someone say amen. Take it. You, you see, you got to relax. Go shopping. Say, I can't afford it. Just go check it out. And say, I declare that declare you are mine. I prophesy. Wake up. Get legs. Locate my, locate my clothes. That is what I want. Hallelujah. Someone say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Someone say, rest. That's what God said me to tell you. Rest, 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 rest. It's going to be all right. Your husband is going to change. He's going to begin to treat you better. Hallelujah. He's going to call you honey, 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 honey. 
Glory to God. He ain't going to stop kissing you. Hallelujah. Why? Because something is about to happen. God's about to hit you with a favor that you have never seen before. If I was here, I'd be shouting. Hallelujah. Make sure there's no echo in this sound system. Listen to this. This is powerful. Let me share some things with you. Jesus Christ knew that the one who was handling his finances was a thief. But why did he stop it? I'm going to share the revelation that I've never shared here with. Why would you let somebody that is a thief handle your finances? Number one, I believe you cannot decline God. Let me say something. Money doesn't or could not employ God and cannot. So the thief. The source of the Lord's wealth was not the, what Judas was holding, it was the glory. And that's a sign to you that Jesus did not stress about money because the thief handled it. You won't let a thief handle your credit card. Are you going to let somebody tell you? are so protective about you. your pin number. You keep changing it. Your bank account is secret. Some of you have a secret accounts. Nobody even know how many accounts you have. So behind the money somewhere in the belt, in the secret place of the most high law, It's a sign that Jesus did not stress about money that he let a thief handle it. You can steal, but you can't outrun the heavenly one. It's your identity. That's who you are. I don't stress about it. I know you're a thief. I don't worry about it. The Bible says, if you can't to steal, you kill what? That's why the Lord never stressed about money. Even fish carried money for him. When he had to pay the bill, the tax collectors came. He told his uncle, go catch the fish, take money out, and go pay. In the glory, that your bank could manifest through anything. Fish stands for the non believer. The wealth of the wicked is laid out for the righteous. The thief of working hand and stealing it through interest rates. On your mortgage, on your student loan, and everything. The system is robbing you. They give you the loan because then you can't afford it. If you can afford it, they don't want to give you the loan. They give you because you can't what? He said, Really? I thought that's why I look for my credit because they don't, they don't want to say proof of income. Of course, you got proof of income, but I mean, you know, if you can't afford it, you, you miss penalties and then the interest go up. And that's why they make the money on the interest and all those penalties. One thing is going to happen if I finish. Listen to this. The wicked are stealing, but God is going to make sure they pay back with interest. Number two, restoration is not limited to our earthly rhythms. Restoration manifests through the glory. Our earthly rhythms cannot hinder. I mean, our, the earthly rhythms of living cannot hinder the glory of God from restoring you. And that's why when Jesus Christ gave thanks to the Father, the food multiplied. Let me show the supernatural class here. The supernatural does not need the natural to multiply. Please listen carefully. The supernatural does not need what? The natural to multiply. The supernatural 
depends or responds to the instructions of the Creator. When we give thanks to God, the Lord gives thanks to God for the food and then it passed it on. That's when it multiplied. It was the instruction from God that caused the, most, the multiplication. It was not the need of the people. When the Lord gave thanks to God, the food multiplied. Rest propels praise. Rest propels thanksgiving. The Bible says, not because you ask that when you ask, you ask a miss. So the Lord has already provided. So the little they had was the natural limitations. When you give thanks, the supernatural took over. God is waiting for you to begin to offer Him praise and lift Him above your circumstances. Then He's going to begin to supernaturally move in your finances, in your health, in your marriage, in every area of your life, in your ministry. And He's going to begin to deliver you in ways that people cannot understand or explain. And the real problem that we have in society today is that people are so worried about things that they hate God and they angry at God and they resent God. You know why they resent God? Because they don't know how God speaks. God doesn't speak at the level of your problem. He speaks at the level of your relationship. The most God is your loyalty and your faithfulness to His Word, knowing that He loves you regardless of your mistakes and your faults. Amen? Relationship is very important. God is a God of covenant. Amen. If you have a need, let me tell you something here. You walk in the atmosphere where the covenant God is on duty. He's going to fix your problem. He's going to deliver you. That's the God I'm talking about. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. Let me show you how the supernatural works. When the Red Sea experience came, watch this. Moses was so one distressed because people were stressing him out. Everybody was whining and complaining. When there are no graves in Egypt, you brought us to die in the wilderness. At that moment, all they saw was death and destruction. And you see, the Egyptians are coming on a mission to kill them. They see death coming. They see destruction coming. They see problems coming. They see misery coming. They see all powers of hell charging towards them. They knew the wrath of Pharaoh was going to be intense because for some reason Pharaoh's firstborn died. So they left Egypt on a bad note and they took the wealth of Egypt. So they took the wealth of the wicked. So they knew that they're coming to take all the wealth. They're coming to kill them. And Moses turned to God. When he turned to God, God said, What a beautiful stretch for He gave him an instruction. Say it again. Say one more time. You're waiting for an instruction. That's what God's going to move. At the instruction of the Lord, God moved in the situation and they were delivered spontaneously. That's the God we're talking about. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And nothing is impossible with the Lord. All things are possible. To them that believe what this. In verse 2, I've got to say some verses. Exodus, verse Exodus chapter uh, 3, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of a fire out of the midst of the bush and looked. He looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Ever said, The glory does not speak natural language. Now, when we see a fire in America, it means it's going to incinerate whatever is burning. But in this situation, the angel of God appears to Moses, and then something happens. The bush is burning, but it's not incinerating. It's not being consumed. Practical. That's the lesson of the glory. Now watch this. In verse 4. And when, verse 3, excuse me, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God call unto him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses, he said, Here I am. Here am I. And he said, Draw not near hither, for put off the, yes, thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou stand is a holy ground. It was a holiness. is a mast. When, we, we, when we're holy, we fear God with holy reverence. But it doesn't mean we are perfect. But we 
reverence God. Righteousness exalts a nation. So because we're covenant believers, we have the right to obtain the mercy of God because we're believed. And our fear of God begins the wisdom in us which brings us bliss of holiness. You are perfect when you fear God. That is holiness. It's not your strength. <laughs> I don't think that devil wants to hear that. Now what this, it says in verse, um, in verse 5, chapter 5, verse 1, and after what Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, thus says the Lord God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Where were they going to hold a feast? In the wilderness, not in Egypt. Listen to this. Guys are calling you to be a public opinion. God is calling you to be the wilderness nut. You saw what you mean by that? A weird person. God is calling you to be crazy. God is calling you to be radical. God is calling you to be unusual. Can I hear that or not? So what do you mean by that? In the wilderness. Oh my goodness. He says here clearly that they may hold a feast and to me in the wilderness. Not in Egypt, but in the wilderness. Why is he calling them to the wilderness and not in Egypt? Because we are not of this world. We are of our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Bank managers are going to be able to figure out how money is going through your account and coming out of your account. Supernatural money is about to come in your bank account. Why? You are here. Someone said, Hallelujah. Your child is going to get hey, 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 hey. Why? They are weird. They are too smart for middle school. They are high, high school quality. God just put wisdom in them. Someone said, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Said, I'm the living God for the impossible. Say it again. Say it one more time. Say it again. Say, Lord, make me a distinction in this world for your kingdom. We are trying to do this in Egypt. God said, no, in the world. That says the Lord God is let my people go that they may hold a feast and to me in the wilderness. And I said, my breakthrough is not earthly standard. My breakthrough is heavenly. Now let me talk to you for a second. You are special. You are unique. You are identified. You are marked by heaven. God has put a stop on you. That's why hell can't stand you. That's why demons can't stand you. That's why they persecute you. That's why they try to put you down. That's why they try to make you depressed. They try to silence the praise that God has put in you. Someone said, Devil, you a liar. You can't silence me anymore. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Someone said, Hallelujah. Let me talk to you right now. The devil hates you. He can't stop you. He can't break you. He can't shut you down. Why? God's on your side. If God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, who can be against you? The devil is a liar. He would have killed you long a time ago. If it wasn't God's protection, if it wasn't God's protection, the devil would have killed you. He tried to drown you. He tried to get an, an alligator on you. He tried to get a triangle on you, a rattlesnake on you, a cat run you over. God's angels want to stop. 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 Back off. You can touch her. You can kill her. Yeah. Even when you messed up, God protected you. Why? He is God. It is so unique that the world cannot 
shut it down. That says the Lord, rest. That's how Pharaoh was. Who is Moses to go and speak to Pharaoh? Moses had nothing in the magic of him. But in the glory realm, he carried the authority of heaven.
he saw the covenant. He was preparing the foundation for the coming forth of his son. Heaven is about Jesus. There's no heaven without Jesus. There's no Israel without Jesus. There's no Abraham without Jesus. There's no Moses without Jesus. There's no Mary without Jesus. There's no future without the Lord. I'll finish by saying this. Now watch this. When Moses saw this book coming in the land of Israel, the Lord won't remind him. What to do? Signs, warnings to Pharaoh. Don't hold my people. Let him go. The Lord spoke to me and said, It's a time to believe for the impossible. That in the future he can say, Things are just coming as I finish. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, verse 2. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Worship is sacred. God is preparing you for worship. He's going to relieve you from bondage so you can worship Him. He's going to relieve you from death so you can stop stressing. He's going to make sure you're the right, right relationship. It's going to remove the wrong relationships out of your life. It's going to bring a roadblock to your focus. There's going to have some shakings to go in your life so it can separate you from preparation. There's a button to get your thinking to change so it can prepare you for the major breakthrough. Someone said, Hallelujah. God wants you to stop murmuring and complaining. He wants you to change your language. He wants you to take the limits of him, limits of him and begin to believe for the impossible. The glory that he saw on the burning bush became his confidence. The Lord led him a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. I want to finish by saying this. Chapter 14, verse 11. And he said unto Moses, Because there were no graves, in Egypt, thou hast taken us, I will die in the wilderness. Wherefore thou dwelt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt. Then he know where he was taken them. But he knew where he was going. Watch what they said, Pastor. Another quote. Is not this is that this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians, Pharaoh, the world. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said, Verse 15. Verse 14. Verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not! Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. That was a death God says, believe the Lord is established. Believe his prophets he shall prosper. Listen to this. Here comes the next word. The Lord shall fight for you. And what does he say? You shall hold your place. We got it the other way. Let us fight. You want God to fight for you? Hold your peace. Rest. So hold peace when you're running up and down, calling every credit card company, calling everybody in the book. Help me out, help me. No, no, no. Peace. Some have been taking too much medication. Then even the medication has rejected you. 
God's going to deliver you tonight in my name of Jesus. In fact, I'm going to tell you, you don't need this no more. Hallelujah. Right after we pray tonight, when you go home, and then your next doctor's appointment, you're going to say, you don't need this no more. You will see big change in your body. Your health has changed. Things are better. Oh, hallelujah. He says, the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Verse 15. And the Lord said, Moses, wherefore? Prophesied to the people, but he's crying to God. That's what's worrying you. You go to church, you're a powerful son of a bitch, you profess the word, you go to your car, you profess it, and the people think you're crazy, then you're, high, you're crying out to God, and God says, I got your attention now. They will say, I'm going to cry out to him until he hears. The Bible says, We shall pray. Pray with our season. It's constant fashion. The Lord says to him, as I finish, Wherefore cry thou unto me, speak unto the children, the children of Israel, that they go forward. Have you lost your mind? The Egyptians are coming, and there is an ocean right here, the Red Sea. So you said, go forward.
place of Bethlehem. Fear not. You rebuke the fear in them. It's a man of ways because fear is a spirit that is trying to hold you down. He shut you down, timid and afraid. Afraid you're going to lose or die. God says, fear not. So he spoke the word. He siphoned the fear out of his soul. He kept the supply of the breath out of his soul. Most people are afraid. I'm not afraid of standing in court like a lion. The God is of me, and He's the hope of glory. And I'm going to pray for you the next few seconds here. I'm going to command your life to change. Now that you believe, you shall receive your breakthrough. How is it going to come? Supernatural. That's going to manifest. Supernatural. How's it going to be delivered? Supernatural. What is going to manifest now? Now. 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 Can you have the sister stand up right there, please? Right there. Quickly. Yes, stand up. Look at the woman right there. Stand up. You see her? She was diagnosed with cancer. They told her she had cancer. And get paralyzed on one side of her body. And she was going to die. And the Lord spoke to me to prophesy on her. The Lord removed the cancer. He removed the paralysis. Now she can walk on her own. Doctors could never figure it out. She had lost her job, went back to her job, they all wondered what happened. Jesus Christ did it for his glory. God bless you. That's the God I'm talking about. He answers prayer. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before.